Hi everyone, thank you for joining our catering and hospitality live q and I'm going to now hand it over to our lovely lecturers and students to answer any of your questions. Good afternoon everybody, hopefully we're all good. Uh, my name is Vinnie, I'm the uh, front of house lecturer at uh, Brooksby Mountain College. Hi, my name is John Fahey. I'm the chef lecturer at Brooksby Melting College. You're all well. Hi, I'm Polly Davy. I'm a pre-existing, I'm a level two student. <laughs> pre-existing. Pre-existing, <laughs> yeah, good one that one. Okay, that's good. Um, well now, because we've got Polly online, we're gonna, I'm gonna pick on Polly uh, a little bit. So uh, Polly, how are you finding, how do you find the course at college? How do you, how are you finding it? I like it. I think it's very good. And uh, what made what made you choose uh, what made you choose the uh, hospitality and catering course? And obviously, you're now specialising in in um, in the cooking aspect. But yeah. why did you change? Why did you do that? Um, I really enjoyed um, cooking in my secondary school, and I thought I could take it further. So I did. Excellent. How are you finding level two? I, I haven't seen you in ages. <laughs> I think it's very good. Um, it's very different to level one because um, you have to do a lot more coursework, but it's quite good in the balance of theory and practical. Good. I think you were you answered uh, a question I was asked today from a, a person who's looking at doing um, a course uh, this well, next September, should I say, uh, saying about the balance of coursework to practical work. Um, yeah. Apparently Hannah's with us. She's gonna. She's trying to link on there, Hannah. She's trying to come on. So um, uh, we're just getting other students for the people who do not know who Hannah is. Um, so, John, what different um, qualifications um, does the course offer? Do the courses that we offer at Brooksby Mountain? Um, yeah, so we do offer we offer a variety of courses. We have the level one introduction to catering, so that's really a, a basic course just to give you a, a bit of ground rules and a bit of knowledge. And then we look at the level two, which takes you up to the next level, which is a little bit more advanced, and we do some more stuff that we would normally do. And then that's hoping that you do the level three, which then you can select if you prefer to do pastry or you can do kitchen larder, and of course. Our hope is that you'll stay three years with us and then go off to university. That's our, our drive that we want to do. We want to get all our students to go to university. Uh, but there is a different route than uni though, isn't there? There's lots of different other routes that uh, students can can take if they choose to do so. Uh, it's not necessarily um, a university route. Um, so um, how do we um, how do we get hold of our uniform, Polly? How do how's the uniform work? Um, the the college sends you a, it's almost like a form and it has a list of all of the stuff you need and a link to a website and that website takes you to a shop called Russums and they actually have a copy of the list and all you need to do is put in your sizes and your name and they they send you all of your stuff and it comes with your name embroidered on all of your shirts with the Brooksby logo and with your initials engraved on all of your knives as well. So you don't miss anything. Fantastic, fantastic. So Vinny, uh, how many yeah. how many hours a week are we in college? Oh, oh as many hours as you would like. Uh, no, uh, uh, basically. Um, We're thinking that, I think, isn't it? Yeah. it it depends if if you're a successful at um well it's all a bit uh pie in the sky at the moment with your gcses um for the people that are like school leavers at the moment with government still don't know whether if they can't sort of what's happening um so it all depends on how successful you are if you are if you are um if you get your grades at gcse um then your core days would be pretty much roughly around three days a week at college um, that said, um, if you do have to do um, English and maths, there will be an extra day on top of that. So roughly about four days at college. Is that correct, Polly? 
Yeah. Now you're fortunate enough that you don't have to do uh, maths and English. Yeah. Well, roughly yeah. about roughly about four days um, at college if you have to do um, maths and English. Three days if you're um, if you're successful with those um, with those grades with those um, subjects. Should I say? John, what um, what else does the um, does the course offer in terms of enrichment? Well, the thing about the uh, is there something I think I think about the, what we do offer is that we offer um, a variety of work experiences, so we can take you to work at football grounds, at stadium, and so we develop we develop your skills as we move along. So you come on the course to learn the basics, obviously, but employers often ring us up and say we've got any chefs there or people who are in, interested might be diversifying sort of pastry or working in cafes and restaurant or food development so we i'd like to think that we do offer little bits of that along the course so i think one of the things that we discussed last year we said to the students that just because you're actually having the chefing and the front of house gives you a major opportunity when you leave so you can go and work in a back of house operations and when I worked at when I worked at Wembley or sometimes on the football grounds when I'm not chefing or front of house, um, I can work back of house. So when the chefs will ask me for certain types of trays, I know what they are. When the restaurant will ask me for certain types of plates and cups and dishes, I know what they are. And they're always looking for people to do that job. So that moves you more into a logistic side or managing the resources. So I'd like to think that the courses we offer do give you a grounding on that as well. Mm -hmm. So we've got our first question from a person called Jay um, and he's asked, he or she's asked, what are the entry requirements for the full time levels? Over to John. OK, so depending on which you're, if you're looking at the level two, we'd like to we'd like to think if you came straight on the level two course, we'd like to think you might have good GCSE grades in English and maths. Uh, you might have uh, done a GCSE in food tech or food science or, or just cookery. That will help you. If not, if you haven't got an M grade sort of thing, what we would do is from next year onwards, we're looking at uh, changing, bringing the, oh, we've just got Hannah on. Hannah's joined Hello. us. Hi, Hannah. So just to go with that, with that question is that, um, yeah, if you've got the grades, you'll come, you could go straight onto the level two, but if you haven't, you'll join us on the level one, which is year one. So the actual course for next year is a two year course. And year one is a bit like what the level one to do now. It's an introduction to the actual to the, the actual food itself. We learn the knife skills and the basic stuff, but that leads you nicely into the level two, which is, is the main part of the qualification. And also, if you've got an interest, that's what we want to hear. Does that answer Jay's question? Yep. Yeah. Um, we've got another question. What GCSEs do I need to do cookery or hospitality course? I think we would. Do you want to do that one? I think you've just, uh, you might have just covered that actually. Um, the next question, what can I do after this qualification? Vinny, this is for you. OK, yes. Well, um, I think the uh, the world's your oyster, really. Depends on whether you're it's um, whether it's uh, your if you go down the cooking aspect, the chefing route or the front of house route, you can go on to uh, uh, cruise liners. You can work in five star establishments. Um, you can pretty much um, go wherever you want. Forget about the, the current situation with the pandemic. And um, it will all uh, sort itself out soon. But um, yeah, most definitely you, you can you can travel the world with a qualification. And if that doesn't um, suit you, you can stay local to home. There's plenty of um, good um, hotels and restaurants within the Rutland Mountain area <clears throat> that this course will give you um, good good grounding and good good um, knowledge base to uh, to apply for that type of um, that type of uh, uh, place. Can we, uh, we've got Hannah, Hannah's, jo Hannah's joined us. Hannah, do you want to just uh, introduce yourself, Hannah? Uh, hello, I'm Hannah. I'm, I'm a level two student at the RCC. This is my first year. I came straight on to level two because I had the qualifications to do so. Um, don't know what else you want to know. Okay. Uh, how, 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 did you, how did you find the, um, the transition coming from GCSE straight onto uh, onto level two, Hannah. Uh, you do a lot more. So as in, like in high school, you did like one hour lesson. Where this is, you do the whole day, and it's a lot. So you've got to be like mentally prepared to cook all day, and then clean, and then do theory. 
that's the good thing about level one it kind of eases you into it because obviously I know that Hannah didn't do it but I did and um, I felt like with level one because you're not doing a full day all at once it kind of eases you into a bit into it a bit cheers guys it's good uh good background knowledge of the um of the course from level one and through to level two and especially if people are at gcse coming looking to come straight on to do a level two course um that's a very honest answer there hannah well done you and um, so somebody has asked how much of this course is practical and do we have to do a lot of written coursework to do? Can we ask, will let the students answer that? Go on Polly. Um, it's a bit half and half really. Um, the more practical you do, the more coursework you have to do. Um, for every unit you do, you have to do a certain amount of assessment sheets and a certain amount of um, written stuff actually in your folder. So the more practical work you do, the more um, written work you have to do as well to back that up, because you have to have the evidence that you've done the practical work in order to get it passed off. You got any more to ask for that, Hannah? It's your decision whether you do your coursework or not. You can do it over the year and you can do a two, three assessment sheets a week or you can do all 50 or however many we have to do at the end of the year. So if you want just to do practical all week, that's fine, but you've got to then be prepared in May to then do all your assessment sheets. It's your decision, really. Yeah, that's good answers. So I think probably where where that's concerned is probably best if you uh, you do a little bit each week. Yeah, a little that, bit at that. a time, and then yeah. it's not as much as you think it is. Yeah. Because the uh, the current the current state of uh, play, because obviously the two students on at the moment are, are kitchen based um, from a front house uh, point of view where I my area, um, it's literally you do you do um, theory units and then you do um, you go into what they call an end test after each um, after each subject sub, subject matter, and then obviously on on the practical um, side of stuff you you'll do. Um, food service um, in, in our restaurant. So you'll learn the basic skills at level one, then on to level two, you'll do uh, obviously more uh, silver serving, more table theatre, and then we'll we, we brush on at uh, beverages at level one, but level two, you'll go more into like um, barista stuff, um, and more, oh. more sort of like um, refined, sort of like bringing you forward from your level one into your level two, um, pretty much the same really as the uh, the course for level one to level two from for, for, for the kitchen aspect. To answer the question. <laughs> so what type of, um, how would you rate and class the facilities then guys at college? I think everything's amazing. I think we need more uh, lids for pots, but other than that, I think we've got all the equipment we need. <laughs> We do need more lid supports. So anyone's out there listening, we need more lid supports. We really do. Yeah. Um, Every so the whole aspect of it, having a restaurant involved with yeah. the cooking is amazing. Have it, ha the fact that the restaurant's actually open to the public as well helps with the knowledge of going out into the actual business and knowing what it's like. So would you say it's giving you a realistic working environment? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, so we've got another question. Can I do this course if I'm a mature student? Uh, most definitely. Um, obviously, it um, it goes. It's down. It's down to um. It's down to funding and your and your personal um situation. Uh, some people may uh, the course may be paid for uh, for that premise, um, but you may have to, you may have to pay for the course. But we we do take mature students on, so it's worth um, getting in contact with the college on our course inquiry line, and that they will then forward um, the interest to us, and then we can sort of like um, we can answer any questions that we, we need uh, in that respect. But obviously, we've got colleagues at um, at, at the college that will know. 
um, how to deal with like if you need to pay for for the courses and um, or or if not, if that makes sense. Hopefully that's answered your question. Um, what about apprenticeship? <laughs> college. Uh, the college does uh, offer apprenticeships uh, for both front house and um, and for the kitchen. So front house you can start at uh, level two, which is called team member, and we do level three. Uh, hospitality uh, supervisory and also we do um, for the cooking aspect we do one called commie chef and then we do one called chef de party so we do offer apprenticeships as well so they can be um, work based uh, learning so you can have a work placement in a in a place obviously in the hospitality environment and then you can apply to us to be uh, to do your apprenticeship your um, your theory aspect with us as well what about taste today's? Well, taste today's obviously in the current situation a little bit um, um, can't take place. But you know, as I, as I said previously, the, the pandemic will hopefully go away soon, and we can try and get back to uh, norm, normal life. And um, so we do do taste today's uh, to answer your question. Um, but at the current state of play. Um, obviously, everything's all been kind of like put on hold. Uh, once, once we get back into college and we get into a nice tier system, our lovely students uh, that are present with us tonight, we will definitely be organising them <clears throat> taste of days or taste of evenings, or you know, it might be on a Saturday or or of an evening at the uh, at the college, and we'll we'll get um definitely get everybody on involved and uh, doing the taste of evening. If I, uh, John, if I, um, yeah. Yeah. do the courses offer any additional uh, learning support for uh, for students for the students? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah well, of course yeah. we do. Uh, I mean, I'm dyslexic. Uh, lots of other lecturers have got other needs, and lots of students have got needs. So we try and support them. We've got a good learning support system at Brookshire Melting College. So basically, when the student does apply to the course. On his interview, we'll ask him them questions, and we really want them to be open. I interviewed a, a girl yesterday who was really open about. It. I said that also, if we can, if you can let me know where I need to help you with. If you've got some learning needs or need extra time in exams, or you need a laptop or that, if you let us know now, then we can plan for it rather than it jumping up onto us. So we offer laptop support, extra time, and that sort of thing to students. And if they got if they got autistic, so we obviously as you know we've got an autistic student on the course as well. Of great support with them. We've got the HP plan, so lots of learning support and lots of support for them to actually do well on the course. Of course, we want them to achieve. Um, I'm going to put this to the to the uh, the two students on uh, on on the call uh, just to make them do some work. How you um how you from how you finding the uh, remote teaching at the moment and doing the cooking from home? Oh, John needs some tech lessons, definitely. He tries. <laughs> Yeah, I'm afraid you're right. I didn't you the tried. first time I, I tried to, I tried to do live stream and that didn't work according to plan. But, you know, I, I had to watch the videos and that, but, you know, but at least we're doing some cooking. I think that's a good thing. Are you, uh, are you it's, finding it enjoy? Are you finding it enjoyable? Sorry, Polly, you find it enjoyable. It's difficult, but um, once you actually get into the cooking at home, it's a lot easier once you get into a routine of it. It's a good thing because all your stuff is where you know it is. And yeah. you go wandering off in the kitchen because no. you know it's in your drawers. And there's and no nobody, John's knives box or something. It's and nobody's gone to your knife box, Hannah, and, and used your your brand new cooking knife. Yeah, that's really annoying when people do that. Well, I mean, the best thing for me is my knives. I brought. I have. I mean, I've got my yellow box of knives home with me, so they are home with me. So at least I, I can access my knives. When I open the box now, there's actually knives there. Not all spread around the kitchen like they normally are. Fantastic. Um, can John, does the college offer um transport? If I'm sort of like in the sticks, uh, if I live out out of uh, the mountain catchment, uh, does does the college offer air uh, transport? I, 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 know, I know. I know these two guys don't need transport. I can't really answer that, but I think what does happen. So I don't know if some of you answer that. Do we offer? Do, I, do we have? There's public buses which you can yeah. get. I know a little bit which you can get through the college and you can have it on your lanyard and there's also a mini bus which I think goes round the Vale of Beaver which picks up students on the way but yeah. it's also 
there's like town buses that come from like Vesta and Syston and um, places that way. I think. You get a bus pass then? I think so, yeah. That's about all I know. Yeah, I know, stu I know we've got students on the course that actually live as far as uh, Market Harbour. Uh, some students actually travel quite a way in to come to us, which is, uh, which is absolutely fantastic. It shows the commitment that they have uh, for coming onto the course. Um, your honesty. Um, what can, I the, the, can, I, sorry, can I ask the two students, have they got any questions they'd like to ask us? Obviously, we haven't been at college, but you think that would benefit students joining the course? Hannah or Polly? I don't think so. And so you think that, you know, the people who, are, who might be interested in joining the course might want to know some extra oh, stuff, something um, they wouldn't considered. What are we planning? If everything is sorted for next year, what are the plans to do next year? Well, the plans are to do is to do the level three, of course in both kitchen and restaurant. Uh, the possibility of, of apprenticeship is still is still something looming over. We've got students, so there's a possibility of joining the apprenticeship. What we're looking at doing is, is, is actually starting, next year we'll start looking at teaching level four and level five. And that's something that will come on stream. Also, we'll be looking at doing some part-time course and additional courses, so students who want to do some, some cake techniques or some cake decorating alongside the qualification we're doing. That's what we're looking at doing, but yeah, so that's the plans. To build on Hannah's question, um, when COVID is eventually over, would we be opening back up as a restaurant? Oh, most definitely. Um, most definitely. Um, it's something that's um, it's paramount for the students um, learning uh, their enrichment um, and their sort of like employability skills. Um, it will give you great, stand you in great stead for going into the uh, into the world of uh, work, and will give you the, the a good background knowledge. And um, yeah, I'm so looking forward to actually going back. And it's we don't have to be in any tier system or any other system, so we can, you know, we, it's business as usual, most definitely. And where where you guys are concerned your enrichment activities that we uh, did have planned this year obviously they've been put on the back burner um but i'm just hoping that we can do some just kind of like you know to um to enhance um your knowledge and stuff um as alongside your qualification because obviously i think you're going to need it after the remote teaching um you know and just to give you something to look forward to really and hopefully we'll still be able to do the takeaway. Oh, there's a, I think I've got, there's a little, oh, I've seen it. Somebody's come up now. Sorry, I thought there was somebody added, asked a question there. Um, we do have a question. Someone has said, um, do I have to do the level one before I do the level two? Um, we can't brush on that earlier but if you've just come on um again it depends on your um your grades so if you come up with um you get your gcse's in maths and english and you're successful at that um the course uh kind of like gives you a route straight to uh straight to level two um but that said as polly uh, mentioned on the call earlier she found that doing level one then moving on to level two uh stuttering in good stead she she was more prepared for the level two course where hannah did as she said she did um food food tech at uh, high school and um she did find obviously and still finding uh level two is is quite um challenging and obviously you know there's more involved at school you're probably only cooking probably about an hour and a day at college you're going to be literally because it's a live working environment you could be cooking for like literally for up to four hours a day maybe even longer in a real in a real environment and it's and it takes a lot out of you in the kitchen especially with the especially because you're on your feet all the time don't get me wrong we do give you breaks <laughs> and we do feel we? Like we hydrate you um, and, uh, i don't we do, remember that um it's it's um obviously ultimately it's, and then if you can take that it's but we can help you. We can help and guide you uh, with that if you'd like to contact us on the uh, inquiry line. OK, 
Okay. And is there anything that they can do to prepare for the course beforehand? Can I ask uh, the students to answer that one as well? Yeah. So Hannah, what did you do prepare? What did you do to prepare for the course before you came on? Uh, well, I applied for the course two weeks before we started, so. <laughs> okay, <laughs> not so not a lot of time. <laughs> Um, well, I, I cook a lot anyway at home, so I just kept cooking. I kept learning new stuff at home and then just developed that when I went to college. It's just oh, yeah. if you find cooking enjoying, you'll find the course a lot easier. If you're just there just to do a course, it's you, you'll find it a lot more boring if you're not there just to cook. It's, it's not that type of course that was kind of... Polly? Um, I, I also didn't really prepare very much, but um, in hindsight, I kind of think that if I would cooked a bit more at home and um, practiced getting the timings right, like cooking more than one thing at once for the same meal and having it all hot and ready at the same time, I think practicing that's a very good thing to do. Making sure that everything's ready at once. Yeah, and having a passion. Having a passion for cooking, that's going to have a massive impact on you. So if, you, if you're passionate and you love cooking and you're doing different, doesn't matter if you're doing different things, even if you're just doing beans on toast, as long as you do beans on toast three different ways, you're in, you know. Yeah. Obviously, so we do it. Yeah. Um, I think the beauty uh, now, because uh, many moons ago, obviously, I was a, I was a student, believe it or not. And, um, you know, the beauty now, you've got, you've got the internet. So you've got YouTube, you've got, you know, you've got search engines that you can go in and plus as well, there's every day there's a cooking show on, let's be honest, you know, um, you know, you've got Bake Off, you've got, you know, you've got Hell's Kitchen, you've got MasterChef. There's always something going on, Saturday Kitchen, you know, Sunday Brunch, I can go on. And, uh, if you, if you watch, and if you watch a couple of those programmes a week, then you're, you're on you're on your way because you're you're showing that you're interested in, in the industry and uh, as a whole. And that's. Any any advice I'd I'd give to anybody is is um use use the internet go onto YouTube learn new 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 stuff that way and there's plenty of recipe books out there and plenty of TV shows get cooking as they say. Okay, everyone. I think that's the end of the session. If you have any further questions, please email course inquiries at brooksbymelton.ac.uk. You can also apply now directly on our website, which is www.brooksbymelton.ac.uk. We'd like to thank John, Vinny, and our lovely two students, Polly and Hannah. And also thank you to everyone for joining our live Q&A today. Enjoy the rest of our virtual open evening, and we really hope to see you soon. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.